chapter 15 of Focus. On Monday, I wake up early to reread my paper one last time with fresh eyes, and it's awesome. I can't wait to hand it in and get a good grade. I want this whole not playing chess situation to be over and old news. I pack a copy, a pa I pack a copy of my paper in my bag with the book Dylan let me borrow so I can give it back to him. The note he wrote me with his number is already tucked away in my desk drawer. I read it a few times. I read it a few times this weekend whenever I started to get sad about missing the tournament. It made me feel better and like I'm still on the team and a great chess player. After I'm done getting ready for school, I have time to practice chess puzzles, which is good news because I need to keep my skills super sharp for Tuesday. I set my alarm for 20 minutes without even thinking, like it's already an old habit, and I start playing. I'm thrown right into the middle of the game. I spot my move immediately and take out the enemy pawn with my queen. So there's only one space between my queen and the opponent's king. The enemy rook slides over to save his king. I don't fall for it. I slide my queen up two squares on the diagonal, take, take out another rook, and take back my direct access to the king. I practice my tactics until the phone starts beeping. Then I stop, pack the rest of my books in my bag, and go downstairs for breakfast. At school, everyone's waiting inside because it's raining. I look around for Santa, but I don't see her anywhere. That's when I realize she's with Red. They're pretty close together, and she's smiling really big. I don't go over to them. I can't ruin this moment for her by showing up and making things awkward with Red. So do you think that's a thing, Dylan asks. I look up as soon as I hear his voice. I'm not sure what Santa would want me to say right now. And I don't want to make it obvious that she likes Red unless I know he likes her back. I shrug. Do you? It definitely is, Dylan says. Cool, I smile. We're both quiet for a few seconds, and I can't decide if it's cute or awkward that we're talking about other people liking each other, when I'm pretty sure we both like each other, too. I think about giving Dylan his book back, but it doesn't seem like the right time, and I guess I kind of like carrying something around that I know belongs to him, even if it does make my bag heavier. You know Red and I aren't friends anymore, he said. Are you kidding? He shakes his head. Nope, he got mad after we went downtown. I guess because I was talking to you, which is dumb, since the whole time we were hanging out, he was talking to Santa. So it's kind of a double standard, you know? Yeah, I say that's not really not okay. There's all that stuff with his dad, and I get that he feels like being a jerk to someone because he's mad, but it's not going to be me. I nod, because I think Dylan's right, and it seems like that might be part of the reason Red got so mad and pushed me away, too. I'm starting to think it wasn't all my fault. It makes me sad for him and worried that he doesn't have a best friend to talk to about everything with his family. He's the one who told everyone that I um, like you. Dylan's voice is soft, that I almost miss what he's saying. I can feel my face turn red. I like you too, I say before I can think about it and stop myself. But you didn't text me, he says. You didn't either. True, he grins. I smile back at him and I can't stop smiling for the rest of the day. Disculp, I say to Senor Campo when I get to my Spanish class. She's standing at the board writing down our next assignment. Como puedo ayudarte? She asks how she can help me. Only I have no idea how to say what I need in Spanish, even though I can always ask her how to say it in English. Como se dice? I need to go to the learning center during the quiz, and I also need extra time. I already feel weird asking, and like maybe I'll be fine taking the quiz in class with everyone else. Only I know that's not true. Not yet. Maybe one day, and if I'm going to bother asking, I know Senora Campo would rather I try saying it in Spanish, even if I get it all wrong. Este bien, si necesito, voy al learning center para el costanario. Necesito extra tiempo. Tiempo. Tiempo extra. Senora Campo corrects my phrasing of extra time, and she says, Si, sí, por supuesto, which means yes, of course. Wait, I say, sorry, I know it's better to speak in Spanish, but I want to make sure I said everything right, because it's important. You are very clear, Senora Campo says. It probably makes sense for you to head over to the learning center now and get started. I'm giving everyone 25 minutes to finish the quiz, but you can have until the end of the period. I keep waiting for Senora Campo to ask why I need to take my quiz to the other room, but she doesn't. Even though I know Miss Curtis told all my teachers about the new accommodations, I guess I didn't realize until now that they're not a big deal to anyone other than me. Thank you, I say. I mean, gracias. De nada. When I get to the learning center, there's another student in the corner of the room, a sixth grader who I recognize from when we played human chess. She glances up at me and then looks back at her paper. I pick a seat on the opposite side of the room and get right to work on the fill-in-the-blanks and short answer questions. It's so much easier for me to stay focused in this quiet room. I get through the first two pages fast. The third page is harder because it's a creative essay in Spanish, and it takes me kind of a while to think of an idea that I like. But I still manage to finish the entire test in 25 minutes. 
I take my extra time to double check all my answers and I'm glad I do because I find a few careless mistakes that I shouldn't have made. By the time I'm officially done, there's still 15 minutes left in the period. I walk back down the hall to class, put my quiz in the pile on Senor Campo's desk and sit down in one of the empty chairs. I don't notice if anyone starts whispering about me when I walk back into the room, but I don't care if they do because for the first time all year, I got exactly what I needed and I know for sure I did my best. I feel really great about my English paper when I hand it in, but I start to get nauseous during last period because I'm so nervous. And by the time I get to Mr. Leon's room to find out my grade, there's a strong possibility that I'm going to puke. Mr. Lee smiles when I walk in, which means nothing. I'm pretty sure he grinned at me the day he gave me the F and took chess away. I sit in one of the chairs in the front row. Give me a minute, Clea. He looks around his cluttered desk. I have your paper here somewhere. Breathe. I'm trying to think of a polite way to ask him to just tell me how I did already when he says, Aha, got it. I hold my breath. Mr. Lee sits down and puts my paper on the desk in front of me. There's an A at the top of the page. I pick up my essay and hold it closer to make sure it's real. It is. I take a deep breath and let out everything I've been holding inside. Thank you, thank you, I say. Thank yourself. You're the one who made it happen. Keep up the great work, he says. I will, I say. I promise. I'll see you at practice tomorrow. I sprint over to the car as soon as I see Mom and Henley. I shout, I did it. I got an A. Duh, I already knew, Henley says. That's amazing, Clea. Well deserved. Mom reaches over and wraps her arm around me. Wait, that means you're back on the team. She says it like she's putting it all together now. We need to celebrate. Ice cream party, Henley shrieks, with hot fudge and gummies. Mom looks at me. That's perfect, I say, and I mean it. When we get home, I go straight up to my room and text Sienna. I'm back on the team. Yes. I was going to ask, but then I was like, don't do that. Always ask. Okay, cool, smiley face. I will, she promises. Wait, I can't believe I almost forgot. I have major news. I type. I heard from someone, a.k.a. a reliable source, you can probably guess who, that Red definitely likes you. It's official. OMG, OMG, OMG. Best day ever, I write back. Seriously? I take out my planner and look at the very short list of things I have to do tonight. Even though I hate missing chess, Mom was right about having a break to catch up. It feels good to be ahead in school for once. I'm about to start my homework for Wednesday when my phone buzzes again. I pick it up because I think Sam's writing something else about the red situation. Except it's Dylan. OMG, we're texting. This is really happening. It feels like a really big deal since we're just talking about how texting equals liking each other. Also, his name looks so good on my phone and I like it totally belongs there. Did you read any more of the book? Yes, I finished it, I write back, because I ended up carrying Dylan's chess book around in my bag all day. Never gave it back to him. Watch out, I'm ready to win big. Wait, does that mean you'll be at practice tomorrow? You know it, I text. That's awesome. I'm pumped. By the way, thanks for letting me borrow the book. No problem, he says. I feel bad for whoever gets paired up against you. Smiley face, same. Smiley face, same. Clea, Henley, Dad, shout, time for dinner. GTG, dinner, Dylan texts. Me too, I reply. TTYL. When I get downstairs, not only has mom set up the coolest ice cream Sunday talk to you later. The coolest ice cream bar, Sunday bar ever with caramel sauce and cookie crumbles, my all two favorite kinds of toppings, but dad surprises us with homemade pizza. I can tell mom and dad want tonight to be special for me, and it feels like everything's finally falling into place. Chapter 16. I'm so excited for chess. It doesn't even bother me that the minute I walk into the room, Quinn starts whispering and pointing in my direction. I get that she's trying to make me feel like I shouldn't be here because I don't belong, but for once, I don't care what she thinks or says about me. I want to win, and I know I can. Red's sitting alone near the door. He looks at me, and I think maybe he's going to say something, but then he turns away. I walk across the room and over to Dylan. I get that sitting next to him is basically the equivalent of wearing a sign that says, I want to be boyfriend-girlfriend, but I do. And even though I know he likes me, I'm still nervous. Welcome back, he says when he sees me. Thanks. I reach into my bag, take out his chess book, and hand it to him. He flips through the pages. I feel like I'm going to regret giving this to you. Only if you have to play against me. I was already scared of that. For good reason, I say. He smiles. Santa walks in and sits next to me, and as soon as she does, Mr. Lee claps to get everyone's attention. Chess camp is two weeks away, and as you know, Katerina Nino will be joining us for the first day. She'll meet one-on-one -on -one with advanced players in the morning and then host a training session for the rest of the team before she has to take off. To be clear, at this point, I have not decided who will be selected. So, work hard over the next two weeks and you might very well get picked. I've known Katerita for a long time and she loves meeting young people who are excited about chess. 
even though all I want to do is jump up and down and scream because I can't believe there's a chance I could be in the top 12, I don't let myself do that. I close my eyes and take a deep breath. Right now I need to focus so I can win and that's exactly what I do. The rest of the week goes by quickly. I win my game on Wednesday. The only problem is I keep getting distracted and looking away from the board. It makes me realize something important. I can't concentrate if I'm in the middle of the table. No chance. Even if my hyper-focus and medicine are both in full effect, other people's breathing and sighing still really bothers me. I have to be at the end of the table to play my best. The next time Mr. Lee picks me to compete in a tournament, I'm going to tell him what I need to win. It seems like the kind of accommodation I should be allowed to have because of my ADHD. Like how I can go to the learning center during tests and quizzes. I guess I'm just a person who needs things to be quiet if I'm trying to pay attention. I'm really glad I figured out what helps. Even though it doesn't seem like a big deal, I know it can make a huge difference. Another good thing that happened this week was that I had an appointment with Dr. Gold. I told her she was right about medication. It makes my ADHD feel a lot smaller. She was happy to hear everything was better for me. Even if things got a little worse at first. Also, I got a B on my math quiz and an A- minus on my lab report. High five Sanum, best partners ever. By the tournament, it really feels like I'm turning things around. Our team's playing at a middle school a few towns over. On the ride, Henley comes up with a cheer and makes mom and dad sing it to me. Clea is the chess queen. That's what makes her opponents turn green. She's always on the winning team. Check, checkmate, win. It doesn't matter that I'm probably not playing today. I'm still excited my family's coming to cheer for us, and I'm proud of how well I did in practice this week. I gave every game my all. It felt good to play like that again and know if I keep working hard that I'll get a chance to compete in another tournament. By the time I find our team room, and everyone's ready in the huddle around Mr. Lee. Sanum's standing on the outside of the group as close to the door as possible, like she wanted to make sure I'd be able to find her immediately. I want you to get out here today and give every game your all, Mr. Lee says. He looks at his notebook. My heart speeds up. I need to stop freaking out for no reason. There's a 0% chance I'm getting picked. Let's go with Sanum. AJ, Red, and Ella, he says. Sanum, Sanum and I exchange smiles. Even though I know the order doesn't matter, I still think it's cool that her name got called first. Isaac, Lily, Perry, Mr. Lee pauses. There are five spots left. I bet on Dylan, Mateo, Quinn, Hunter, and Layla. Mateo, Hunter, Layla, Mr. Lee says. Check, check, check. And finally, Clea and Dylan. I don't realize he's called my name until Santa puts her hand up to high five me. So if you crush it today, which you definitely will, I'll be in the top 12 for camp, I finish her sentence. I know it's true as soon as the words are out of my mouth. It's weird how something can feel so close and so far away at the exact same time. I take a deep breath. I know that I need what I need to do to win. BRB, I have to talk to Mr. Lee about where I'm sitting before I'm stuck between a heavy breather and someone who's sniffling every four seconds. Good call, she says, fingers crossed. I cross my fingers on both hands and walk over to Mr. Lee. I really hope I can convince him that this is really important. I clear my throat and stand up as tall as I can. I didn't think I was going to play today, otherwise I would have talked to you about this earlier, but it's hard for me to focus with my ADHD, and it would really help if I wasn't in the center of the room or in the middle of a table. Mr. Lee looks his watch. Let me see if there's anything I can do. I'll be right back. I stare at the door and remind myself to breathe for what feels like forever until Mr. Lee finally reappears. Please, 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 I really need this to win. You're all set. You'll be at the end of the table in the far corner of the room, away from the door for all three rounds. Mr. Lee says, and I'll make sure you have the appropriate accommodations moving forward, so you won't have to ask me next time. Thank you, I say. No, thank you, he said. It was very responsible for you to say something. I can see that you're not only dedicated to chess and the team, but to your own needs. Is that a good thing, I ask, because I really can't tell. It's not good. It's excellent, he says. I picked you to represent our team because I think you can win today, but great chess players have to believe in themselves. And now, I know you do. You wouldn't have stood up for yourself and asked for the things you need to play your best if you didn't think you could win. I nod. Sure, Mr. Lee is right about that. I know I can, I say, because it's true. And right now, I feel I can can do anything. That's great to hear, Mr. Lee says. I turn around and run over to Santa. Two thumbs up, I say. Yes, she puts up her hand and we high five. I'm ready. I don't get distracted once during the first round, thanks to my awesome seat in the quiet corner of the room. The only problem is we draw, which isn't that great for me, but the good news is that drawing is a billion times better than losing. And since I lost all three rounds at my last tourney, I'm already improving. In the second game, my opponent is at the same level as me. Makes me realize I'm actually really good. In the end, I can't find a way to beat him, and the round ends in another draw. Boo. When I sit down for the third round, I'm nervous. I want to win more than everything, anything, and this is my last chance. Jane and I go back and forth, move, let go, tap right. 
I slide my queen over, putting her king in check. Looks like I'm so focused on winning, I don't. I didn't realize the black queen is about to skewer me, but I do. It's a decoy. I'm a magician. Look over here while I do something distracting with my not so little pawns before you realize what's about to happen to you. <laughs> Jane does exactly what I want her to. She captures my queen with hers. I move my pawn up and place it on the far end of the board so I can promote it. Poof, I turn my pawn into a queen. In an instant, the black king is back in check. Now Jane doesn't have a chance or another move other than to get her king out of danger, which means her queen is about to be captured by my newly promoted queen. She slides her king to the side, and as soon as she taps the clock, I skewer her queen with mine. Bye-bye. Decoy executed perfectly, if I do say so myself. I stay focused, backing her king between my king and the queen, until checkmate I won for the first time ever in a tournament. And it's even better than I imagined. It feels like a sugar rush and getting an A on the first day of summer vacation, all put together. Only better, because I feel like I'm floating out of the room and down the hall. I can't stop smiling because I did it. I'm the winner. It's my victory, and no matter what, no one can take it away from me. I see Sam standing at the other end of the long hall between the cafeteria and the music room, looking right at me with nervous, hopeful eyes, like she's been holding her breath, waiting for me to appear with good news. As soon as our eyes meet, we run over to each other. I won, I shout. We won, she shrieks. Oh my gosh, yes. We hug and jump up and down in circles until I'm dizzy. Clea, Sam, I'm someone yells for us from the team room, halting our BFF for life victory party. It's Dylan. We're all waiting for you. Sam smiles at me with her eyes and leads the way. Once I'm standing next to him, Dylan puts his arm around my shoulder. It's soft and warm. Then he leans in and whispers, you rock. And out of nowhere, there are a million butterflies flapping in their wings inside my stomach. The whole team and most of the families are already in the room. Great work, Clea. I knew you could do it, Mr. Lee holds up his hand. We high-five. Thanks. Henley runs over and squeezes me tight. Winner, winner, vegetarian, chicken dinner. Thanks. That's you, she points to me. And you and you and you, she says in her loudest voice, and points to each of the people on our team. Like she doesn't care who hears it. It feels big and important, like a victory for Henley. She grabs onto my hand. Let's go, she says, pulling me over to Mom and Dad. Mom hugs me first. You're amazing. We're so proud of you, Dad holds on tight like he wants to make sure I know how much he means it. After the tournament, the whole chess team goes to the hideout to celebrate our big win. The plan is Mom and Dad and Henley are going to drop Santa and me off downtown. And while we're hanging out with everyone, Santa's parents are going to bring a bag of her stuff over to my house because our parents met at the tournament and obviously really like each other. And now she's sleeping over tonight for the first time ever. I'm standing in the hall by the bathroom waiting for Santa while my family goes to the car when Red walks up to me. Can we uh, talk? I shrug, I guess. He cleans his throat. Sorry, I said I didn't want to be friends anymore. Then why'd you say it, I ask. Even, because even though I want everything to be fine again, it's not. And I can't pretend, not this time. Because I was sick of my dad letting me down and then saying sorry and expecting me to forgive him. And it's kind of how I felt like you were doing that too. But it wasn't the same because you actually felt bad about hurting me. And you were kind of having a hard time. My dad, he's only saying sorry because he doesn't want me to be mad at him. But he doesn't really feel bad about anything he's done. He likes Colorado and barf. And I was mad at him and I took it out on you. I shouldn't have done that. And Dylan, I say. Red nods. I know, I was a jerk to him too. Pretty much, I say. I'm sorry, I apologized to Dylan earlier. Red taps his foot like he's nervous. I really want to be friends again. If there's any chance you can forgive me. I think about his question because I get that he's sorry, but I want to tell him the truth. I mean, I forgive you, but the thing is, I'm never going to be perfect, I say. I'm doing my best, and I think it's pretty good. But if I only have a certain number of chances left and you're keeping score, we probably shouldn't be friends. Because you don't want friends who are waiting for you to mess up so they can be like, see, you did it again. I nod. I just don't think that's good for me. I don't want to do that ever again, he says. I promise. Don't promise. Just really try hard not to. Okay, he says. I will. Red steps closer and hugs me. I hug him back, holding on tight, because I really missed him. Finally, Sam squeals and runs over and wraps her arms around both of us, and it feels good. When Sam and I get to the hideout, I go straight up to the counter and order hot chocolates, dark for me and milk for her. Quinn is standing by the barista waiting for her drink when I walk over. Just so you know, everyone's talking about how you cheated in that last round, she says. Really? Well, I didn't, but good try. I say, by the way, it's too bad you didn't get picked to play. That must be really tough. You're a loser if you think winning one match in one tournament changes everything. Oh, it changes everything, I say. And by the way, she looks at me. I can tell we both know it's true. Two hot chocolates, the barista announces. I pick up my order and walk away. After Sam and I finish our drinks, she disappears with Red, and I end up sitting alone in front of the fireplace. I keep looking around for Dylan, but he isn't anywhere to be found, so I stare at my phone and pretend like I'm texting someone, even though I know 
even though everyone I know in text is here. Hey, Dylan appears to me next. Can I talk to you? Like, maybe alone? Yeah, I say where? He tilts his head toward the door like he wants me to follow him outside. I get up and we walk out the front door and into the cold. We turn the corner onto a quiet side street. Once we're alone, he stops walking and looks at me. I can tell he wants to say something, but he doesn't. Not right away. I bite down on my lip because I don't want to say anything stupid and ruin up whatever might happen. I can see his hands are shaking, and for a second I think it might be because he's cold, since we both left our jackets inside, but then I realize he's nervous. Before I think it through and stop myself, I take a step forward him and slip my hand into his. He wraps his fingers around mine and squeezes like he doesn't want to let go. My stomach flips. Do you, um, want to go out with me, Dylan says? I mean, we don't have to go anywhere. We can't. I just mean, do you want to, like, be my girlfriend? Yes, I say before he has a chance to say anything else or take back his question. Okay, he smiles. Good. I smile back at him. And before I know it, his lips are on mine and we're kissing. It's soft and sweet and mint chocolate flavored. And I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with my hands. So I leave them exactly where they are because I never want the the kissing to stop. I want to stay like this forever. Sam and I change into our PJs and pick out a movie. It turns out she's really into magic but loves superheroes, which is new for me. But I'm on board. I like the idea of having top secret powers. We sink into the big sofa with all the snacks we carry we can carry and I'm about to press play and start Wonder Woman when she whispers Red kissed me. No way I say Dylan kissed me and he asked me out Shut up. Wait. Do you think the boys planned it? No chance. Actually I have no clue. Sanum takes a Twizzler and wraps it around her finger It was my first kiss Mine too I say. I think I was bad. You weren't. How do you know she asked because Red has never kissed anyone else as far as as far as he knows you're the best kisser on earth She smiles and takes a bite of her licorice Wait, now I'm kind of nervous. I was bad. I was bad, I say. We need to just Google it, she says, and starts typing into her phone. Am I bad at kissing, she pauses. Okay, did you bump teeth, or did you move your head all over the place for slobber? No, and ew, she laughs. I do, too. She looks back at her phone. Did the person push you away? Definitely not, I shake my head. Me neither, she says. And you didn't have dry lips or bad breath? Nope, I say. Then we're totally good, she says. Go us. Sam's the kind of friend who makes everything better, even things that are already good. The last chapter in the book, chapter 17, the end of the story. On Monday morning, Mom, Dad, and I have our check-in with Dr. Gold. Everything in her office is the same. It still smells like gingerbread. The fancy chessboard's on her desk like always, and she's wearing another one of her bright dresses. Only everything feels different because I am. How's it going, Dr. Gold asks as we're all seated. A lot better. The plan's working, and you were right about telling my teachers what I need. It really helps. And one more thing. I played in my chess tournament, and I won. I can't stop the words from flying out of my mouth. I've been so excited to tell her of all my good news. Dr. Gold smiles at me. I'm glad to hear that you're feeling good and doing well, Clea. It's wonderful. We think so too, Mom says. Dad nods. The only problem is that I have a lot of big assignments to do this weekend and a history test. I'm sort of worried that it's going to be hard for me to get everything done and play my best in chess. So how are you going to handle the competing pressures, Dr. Golds asks. I made a list of everything I need to do and I'll go to the library at lunch because that actually helps me a lot. But I think I have to ask Mr. Lee if I can sit out of practice on Tuesday so I have more time to study after school. Cleo, you don't have to do that, Mom says. We can come up with another plan, Dad offers. I love them both for listening to me and getting how important chess is, but I know what I need to do. I shake my head. I'll have a much better chance playing well in chess and getting a good grade on my test if I skip practice than if I try to do everything when I already know I can't. At least not yet. Are you sure, Mom asks? It's definitely not what I want to do because there's a chance if I miss chess I won't be in the top 12 anymore and being in the advanced group at camp is like the real deal. It means you're officially good and I wish I didn't need extra time to study but I do. So yeah, I am because deep down I know it's the right thing for me even if I wish it were different. That's very mature, Dad says. Dr. Gold nods. I understand there's a difficult decision but you're making the start smart thoughtful choice to think ahead and balance your responsibilities. I'm impressed. And no matter what happens with camp, I think Mr. Lee would be too. I nod because I know that's definitely true. When I get to school, I knock on Mr. Lee's classroom door. Clea, come on in, he says. How can I help you? I walk over and take a deep breath. His secret t-shirt says Arcade Fire, which I think is maybe a band, but I'm not sure. I can't come to practice on Tuesday because I need extra time this week for homework. And even though chess is the number one most important thing in my entire life, if I get a bad grade in school, I won't be able to play or go to camp. And I think taking a day off from practice is what I need. Mr. Lee looks at me and nods like he's really listening and thinking carefully about what to say next. He leans against his desk and crosses his arms. Strong chess players need to think ahead about how to win, but they also need to anticipate how they might get tripped up along the way. That foresight differentiates good players from great players, and that's exactly what you're doing right now, planning out a strategy so that you can do your best. 
So you think I could be great, I ask? You already are, he says. Keep up the good work, and thank you for letting me know in advance. That helps me a lot. I will, thank you. I'm going to work really, really hard in practice, I say. I'm glad to hear it. I do my best in practice on Monday and Wednesday and give both games my all, finishing the week with one draw and one win. I'm not sure it's enough to make the top 12. I think that's going to depend on how a lot of other people played, since right now I'm on the cusp of being advanced. By the end of the week, I get an A on my Spanish project, a few check pluses on different homework assignments, and a B on my big history test. I feel like my study system's finally working and getting better every day. It feels good to keep improving. When mom pulls up in front of school on Saturday morning for chess camp, I know that no matter what happens, I did the right thing for me. I'm about to open the door and get out of the car when mom takes my hand in hers and she holds on tight. No matter what happens in there today, I think you're good enough to be in the top 12. Thanks, Mom. I wrap my arms around her. She hugs me back. I love you, she says. I love you too, I say. Then I get out of the car and walk inside. There's a lump in my throat and a pit in my stomach, like when I first started taking medicine, only as soon as I see Santa standing by the door waiting for me, they both disappear. Because even if I don't make the advanced team, I know it'll be okay. Tell me, I say, as soon as I'm standing next to her, just get it over with already. You're kidding, right? She looks confused. I definitely didn't look at the list without you, because... A, um, no, I'd never do that. And B, checking the list without you seem like bad luck or something. I smile because she's totally right, and it feels good to have her on my side. I'm scared, I say. I really want to make it. I know, but if for some stupid reason you don't, promise you won't give up. Never, I say, because that's one thing I know for sure I won't do. Not now or ever. Falling down and getting back up is sort of my thing now. She grins. It's like your superpower. I smile back because it's true, and I like thinking about ADHD that way. Sanam and I grab onto each other's hands and walk over to the list. I breathe and scan the names. Advanced chess team. Number one, Red Levine. Number two, Sanam Nassimi. Number three, Dylan Johnson. Number four, Isaac Andrews. Number five, A.J. Patel. Number six, Lily Marino. Number seven, Layla Shaw. Number eight, Matteo Cohen. Number nine, Quinn McLaren. Number ten, Perry Verma, number 11, Clea Adams, and number 12, Hunter Jones. Sam and I scream at the same time and then hug and jump up and down. I did it. I made the top 12. It's the best feeling I've ever had in my entire life because even though it was hard to get here, I know that no matter what happens, I can get here again and again and again. It's a secret power that's always with me now, making me stronger and better and smarter.